In this video I'm going to be going over how to test, build and compare different structured equation models using the R package Levon and to a lesser extent SEMplot structured equation model plot just to uh, get an eyeball of how things are looking. So I'm working with um, some organizational psychology data not the most exciting stuff, but it serves the purpose of illustrating how to use the package. So just having a quick look at my data, just type head and voice, and you can see that there are a lot of variables and there's a lot of missing data as well. I think the sample size was around 2,300, but there's like 800 missing data points for most data so when you do a pairwise analysis it comes down to around 535. Not ideal but again it's just an example. So essentially in Levon there's three steps to um, developing a model and seeing how it looks. So the first step is to actually describe your model using Levon language. There's the actual measurement model which is similar to um, an exploratory factor analysis there's regressions, which where it becomes more of a path analysis, and then there's residual coefficients. Those are the three primary aspects of a SEM model, and Levan covers all of those quite well. So in this data set, we're working with five constructs of employee voice, and I want to see if they load onto a single construct or multiple constructs. Later on, I want to see if there are different voice constructs, how do they influence certain outcomes differently? So that's essentially what I'm going to be going through in this example. So in the first model, model one, I'm just going to be looking at whether all five of these voice constructs load onto a single voice latent variable. So to do that, I'm going to define my model, model one, an arrow sign, and then a single quotation mark, and I've just put the hashtag measurement model here just to be clear that this is exactly what I'm going to be testing. I'm not going to be including any regression coefficients. I'll get to that later in the outcomes. And I'm not looking at residual correlations yet. But I'll show you how to do it if you want to include it in your own models. So I'm going to be calling the single latent structure variable that I want to anticipate I'm going to be discovering voice and that includes the construct of self-expression, voice efficacy, silence, promotive voice within a team and promotive voice to a line manager. So that's all I want to do with this particular model. I want to see whether I want to see how the model looks when all five of these variables load onto a single construct. So once I've entered all the information, you need to close off the model with another single quotation mark. I'm going to enter that model and now the model is saved so it should be a value here so you can see model 1 over here and it includes all the constructs that I've included in it now the next step is to define the st structured equation model So we're going to be calling the first model fit1 and that includes a structural equation model of the model 1 that we've just defined above and the data for that will be voice so Name my data the same as the single unitary construct, but they're not the same. Voice is my data set, and voice here is just what I've called the latent variable. So just keep that in mind. Now that I've defined my model and it's saved, I can actually do a, a structural equation analysis on it. So, foot one, arrow, sim, which is the function of Levon parentheses model 1 because I've defined model 1 over here and the data is voice right so we're going to punch that in and now it's saved but we can't actually see it yet so we want to get a summary of what this structured equation model tells us so we're going to put summary open parenthesis fit1 because that is our, S our SEM model's name and we want to include standardized equal equals true because if we don't do that then only the latent variable outcomes will be standardized but everything else will be unstandardized and despite what people say I I like seeing standardized values 
All right, so let's have a look at the summary. There we go. So now we get our test statistic model. That's significant. Doesn't really mean much with a single model. But let's go down here to the latent variables. So this is kind of what we're interested in here. And we can see that all five of these voice constructs do load onto a single voice um, latent variable, but to differing extents. So the promoter voice seems to be substantially lower looking at the standardized values than the the more human aspect of voice. So self-expression and voice efficacy and silence expectedly or loads on quite significantly, but is a negative load. So it is kind of the antithesis of voice, which makes sense. And then the variances here just are pretty much the error rates or the, the parts of the variables that are not taken into account when looking at the overall commonality between all five and the latent structure. These are unique variants and we're interested in the common variants. Right, so at first glance, it looks, it looks all right. But I want to have a look at the fit measures. So how, what are the actual levels of fit for this model? And to do that, I'm going to be type fit measures with capital M, fit one, because that is our model that we're testing. And we want to have a look at the CFI, the RMSEA and SRMR. Now, different people will tell you to look at different fit measure, fit measure indexes, but um, these are the ones that are commonly used and I've never had any issue with using them before when justifying a model. So the CFI is the comparative fit index and the CFI should be above 0.9. The RMSEA is the root mean square error of approximation and it should be below 0.08. And lastly, the SRMR is the standardized root mean square residual, and that should also be below 0.08. So let's have a look at what they actually are. So the CFI is 0.633, which is quite substantially below the recommended value of 0.9. The RMSEA is definitely above 0.08, and the SRMR is also definitely above 0 0.08. So what that tells us is that even, even though all these variables are significantly loaded onto a single variable, the fit of the model for the data is subpar and something needs to change. And if we want to visualize the model, we can use the semplot package using sempaths fit1, which is our model. We are looking at the paths between the variables in the model and we want standardized labels and with rotation one. I'm just going to go ahead and enter this for now and as you can see here it cuts away some of the the labels as so if you do labels as badly as me for your variables um, it's going to be a little bit messy but we can kind of deduce what they stand for. We can see uh, our latent variable of voice with all of our five constructs of voice. And we'll see if we look in conjunction at the model with the standardized loadings, they will be they would match, as well as the, the error rates or the variances for all of the constructs. But just by having a look at it quickly, we can see that the, the human voice aspects of the constructs are loads substantially stronger than the more promotive side of things. And of course, silence is just uh, the opposite of what we're looking at. Because someone who is silent cannot have a voice. Right, so let's move on to model two. So model two, I'm gonna do a little, two things a little bit differently. I'm going to have two latent variables as opposed to one. I'm going to have human voice using self-expression, voice efficacy and silence, and then a promoter voice latent variable, which includes the, the constructs of promoter voice to the team and promoter voice to your line manager. Again, I'm not going to be having any regressions, nor am I having residual correlations. Let's go ahead and run the model. Model 2 is saved. 
and we want to go ahead and fit that model using the Levon sem command. All right, our model is saved and we want to have a look at it. So let's have a summary. By having two latent variables instead of one, we can see that the, the loadings for promoter voice when on their own latent variable is much stronger than when they're forced onto the same variable, which is essentially saying the same thing is being measured as different types of voice, which is self-expression and voice efficacy. So these maintain their loadings as well as silence, which is loads quite strongly onto the human voice aspect of um, employee voice. Levan also automatically calculates the, the covariances between your different latent variables that you've included. So here we can see that our human voice construct as a latent variable and our promoter voice latent variable have a correlation of about 0.404. So they are somewhat related. All right, so let's have a look at our fit measures. Okay, so our CFI is above 0.9, our RMSEA is below 0.08, and our SRMR is also below 0.08. So just by looking at these foot measures, we can tell that the the way we've defined the model is substantially better than the, the first model. And we can also test this using the ANOVA command, which is ANOVA, open parenthesis, our first model fit one and our second model for two. So if we run that, you can see that the, the chi-square value for fit two, our model two, is substantially smaller than the chi-square value for our first model. So we can say with quite a lot of confidence that the second model is substantially stronger in terms of fit than the first model and therefore two voice constructs are more appropriate than a single voice construct. All right, so for model three, we're just gonna take out this the silence construct because it loads negatively onto both of them. And I wanna see if the model improves by having it taken out. It seems to be a completely different antithetical construct than the other voice constructs we're looking at. So for model three, I'm having human voice and the two exogenous constructs of self-expression and voice efficacy. And for promoter voice as a latent variable, I'm having the exogenous constructs of promoter voice to the team and promoter voice to the manager. I'm not including regression coefficients because I'm not looking at predictors or outcomes just yet. And I'm not including residual correlations because I'm working under the assumption that Self-expression, voice efficacy, promoter voice to the team, and promoter voice manager are mildly correlated at best. And Levon automatically calculates the covariance between the two latent variables. So I'll leave that as it is for now. Let me just run the model. All right, our model is saved. I'm going to fit the model, fit three, sim model three, data voice, and I'm going to have a look at the summary. Right, so overall, it seems to be quite strong. Our self-expression variable is loading quite a lot stronger than the, the voice efficacy variable, but they still make the cut for inclusion. And promoter voice to the team and promoter voice to the manager, a similar situation. Overall, quite substantial strength of the loadings on both of these outcomes, and we can see by excluding silence, the covariance between our two latent constructs has decreased. So what they explain is more unique, could be argued. And let's have a look at our fit measures. So just by having a quick eyeball, we can see that our fit has increased once again by excluding silence. If we want to test that, we can. We can include all three of our models so far, but if you include models when you've taken out a variable, you get this error that says that some some models are based on different set of observed variables. And that's just because we have removed silence from our latent variables. And if we want to have a look at what the model looks like, there we go. So we can see that 
Our two latent variables of human voice and promoter voice have a correlation of about 0.37, which should match up here. There we go. And then we have our two exogenous voice variables of self-expression and voice efficacy loading quite strongly onto the human voice latent variable. And then we have our promoter voice variables loading quite strongly onto the promoter voice latent variable. Looking at our ANOVA model comparison, we can see that our third model has a substantially lower chi-square value than our second model, which in turn was superior to our first model, and that is significant at the 0 0.05 level, which is good enough. So we can tell now that model 3 is the best model that we've done so far. We can proceed to have a look at how these latent variables will have an influence on certain outcomes. And that's what we're going to be doing in model 4, adding outcome variables. So in model 4, in our measurement model, that's going to be the same as model 3, so executing silence with two latent variables. So I'm going to be looking at how human voice and promoter voice influence psychological safety and innovation behavior of participants or individuals. And I'm going to be looking at the outcomes of both of these variables for both latent variables to see if there's any type of difference in predictive capabilities. Again, no residual correlations. So here we go, I'm going to define our model as fit for arrow sim open parenthesis model for which we've defined using our data of voice. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's have a look. Oh, true, should not have two E's. Maybe it should. Anyway, let's run summary and have a look at what it says. We can see that the loadings on latent variables are relatively similar to what they were. And what we're really interested in is looking at the regressions. And we can see that human voice is good at predicting psychological safety, so there's a strong positive relationship, but it has no significant influence on innovation behavior. Whereas promoter voice predicts psychological safety, but to a substantially lower extent than human voice does, but it's a much stronger predictor of innovation behavior. So you can see that there are structural differences in how these two different voice measures predict the same variables. So let's have a look at our fit. Again, it seems pretty good. Maybe not as strong as the third model. But let's see what let's see what it says. Looking at the ANOVA comparison, we can see that the the chi square value has increased, perhaps because of the uh, increased number of parameters that we've included in the model, but the ARC and BIC, which are alternative measures of fit, have decreased. So you need to um, pick and choose as long as you can substantiate it, and based on what the model is designed for, which measures of fit you're going to include in your uh, justification. So let's have a look at what the same path model would look like in this case. So again, you can see that Levon has automatically calculated the covariance between the two outcome variables. They have a correlation of 0.37, as well as the covariance between our two latent variables. And you can see how the different loadings, which correlate with um, our standardized values here. And that is essentially it for this video. If it was useful, give it a gentle like on the screen. And if you want more videos like this, or you just want to be a great person, subscribe to the channel.